Well, good morning. Welcome to worship here at Shepherd of the Cross, where we are led by Christ and transformed by his love and his grace. This morning, we continue in the glow of the Epiphany season as we journey from the manger through this entire season of light as we come to know just who this Christ child is for us and for the world. A couple weeks ago, we met Jesus at the shore of the River Jordan, and then last week, we heard Jesus' call his disciples to follow, and this week, we travel up on the mountain where Jesus begins to teach his long teaching narrative in the Gospel of Matthew, beloved known as the Sermon on the Mount, and of which we will hear through the rest of the season of Epiphany. So gathered with all God's people in God's kingdom, I invite the congregation to rise as we offer our praise, singing all my relatives. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Gathered in the presence of God and of each other, let us confess our sin. Almighty and merciful God, we know that when we offend another, we offend you. We are aware that we have often allowed the shadow of hate to cloud our souls, hiding the light from our unseeking eyes. We have said unpleasant and hurtful things to those around us when they have failed to live up to our expectations. Grant that we might find that spark of love that ever burns within us, the love that you have shown to us even when we failed you. Fan the embers of that love until it roars again in flames of love, peace, and reconciliation. Forgive us our sin and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us into new life through your son, Jesus Christ, who died for the sins of all. Amen. 
This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from our sin. May Almighty God, who caused light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts, cleansing us from our sin and restoring us to the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. we join our voices together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and a thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace, that in our words and deeds, the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and I invite the kids to come on up 
and join me. Good morning, Holden. Good morning, Elise. A little bit more awake? Okay, we're getting there. I saw you got to hold Josie for a while. It's a beautiful thing. Is Josie going to come and join us too? Fantastic. We got some Allen kids joining us. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, it's good to see you guys all again this morning. I know I get to see most of you, not all of you guys, for golf last Sunday night where we were talking about, do you anybody remember? We were talking about fish for a little bit. We were talking about what happens in that font. You remember that? Baptism. And during that time, Dave led us in a game of Simon Says. Is this ringing a bell? Okay. So one of the commands that Dave told us to do, he said, Simon Says, share a blessing with somebody next to you. Do you guys remember any of the things that you guys did when Dave told you to do that? Do you remember? What did you do? You said, have a good day. That's fantastic. I remember some people turned around and shook somebody's hand. Thank you. I saw that some people turned to each other and bowed to each other. That was interesting. I saw some people made the sign of the cross on somebody else's forehead. And I also heard some people say, God loves you. So when all of us received that blessing, or when I received that blessing that night, did I do anything to receive a blessing from this person next to me? Maybe. Did I, did I do something special beforehand? What did I do? I'm curious. I led us in church. Okay. So let's think about it this way. When Josie was baptized just last week, yeah, you heard your name, at that baptismal font, did she do anything before I made the sign of the cross on her forehead? <laughs> she spit out her binky, True. She, did she have to do anything to earn that I made the sign of the cross on her forehead? God loves her, and that was already there. In the same way, at the end of the service, I offer a blessing. It sometimes goes something like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. Did you guys do anything before I said that? You, you were in worship, right? But did you do something special to earn it? What did you do? What do you think? You worshiped? Yeah, Okay. So we did come here to worship, and that's something we do to receive a blessing, right? It's good to receive blessings and and offer ourselves back to God. But blessings, they're a gift. They are truly, truly a gift. There's nothing that we have to do to earn these blessings. And we're going to hear a huge long list of blessings in our gospel story today that Jesus is going to tell us. And he's going to say things like, blessed are the humble. Or, blessed are those who are grieving. Blessed are those who are peacemakers. And it goes on and on and on and on. I'm going to give you a full warning. There's a lot of blessings, okay? But sometimes, even as adults, we get a little stuck in this, thinking that, oh, if I don't fit in these little categories, then I'm not blessed. I'm not blessed by God. But the thing is, Jesus was calling all those other people blessed because he was seeing other people who weren't necessarily included. And so it's like he's saying, oh, that person over there, he's not with us? Oh, he's blessed too. Come here. That person over there, he's not included? Yeah, come over. You're included too. Because we're all included. Because did any of us earn the blessing of God? No. We did not earn the blessing of God. But does God love us? Yes. There we go. So, if you guys remember anything today, I want you guys to remember that, number one, these blessings that we receive from God, It's not something we have to do. We're all included in the blessings of God. And now it's our responsibility to go around and bless other people. So I need you guys to help me with that before we're done for today. So when I smile at you, I got a smile. If I smile at you, did I get a smile? Yes. Smiles, most of the time, are catchy when they're done honestly, right? They're kind of like a yawn, kind of like a sneeze. Sometimes we, we, we do the same thing. And I heard from a pastor once upon a time that a blessing is like being smiled upon by God. So when I say to you, God bless you, it's like I'm wishing for God to smile upon you. So I want you guys, because you can't stand kids who smile at people, to turn around and smile at the congregation and see what happens. Yes, we have smiles, we have giggles, we have laughter. All right, so 
instead of doing our normal repeat after me prayer today, I would like you guys to find somebody, I'm going to encourage you not in your family. I want you to smile at them. I know. I hope that's not too hard. And I would like you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead and say, blessed are you for yours is the kingdom of God. Let's try that repeat after me first. Blessed are you for yours is the kingdom of God. All right, so I want kids, I want you guys to go and find some people. And congregation, I want to invite you guys to get in on this action too. If you want to just turn to your neighbor, that's fine. You can do it in your families. Turn to your neighbor, smile at them, and make the sign of the cross. Blessed are you, for yours is singing the kingdom of God. All right, go for it, guys. I'll do it with you guys too. <laughs> that's not smiling. <laughs> are you good? <laughs> Very good. Say, blessed are you, for yours is the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen, amen. Our first reading is an oracle of judgment from the prophet Micah. With the mountains and all the earth acting as the jury, God brings a lawsuit against Israel for not upholding their end of the covenant. Trying to defend themselves, the Israelite people respond by pointing to all the sacrifices they've offered. Yet these offerings are dismissed as Micah points the people to acts of justice, fidelity, and service. A reading from Micah chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done for you, to you? <clears throat> and what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, <clears throat> and, Mir and Miriam. O oh, my people, Remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beer, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Our psalm for today is a liturgy for entering the temple. The first verse asks, who may enter the temple? And the rest of the psalm offers a response. After hearing the opening question, the congregation is invited to proclaim the response. O oh Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue 
and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. <clears throat> Our second reading continues in Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Having addressed a division within the Corinthian church, Paul turns his attention to the power of the cross. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish? the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God shows what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God shows what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, and so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Last week, we heard Jesus begin his ministry, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, gathering many who have started to follow him, Jesus goes up on a mountain and expounds upon what this kingdom really is all about. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds... He went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice, be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm sure this has never, ever, ever happened in your households. But just bear with me on a quick thought experiment. Especially for those of you who are parents of young kiddos or who have ever had young kiddos in your home. Have you ever done all those loads of laundry? All those stinky, smelly, grimy loads of sport clothes and clothes out in the snow and perhaps even clothes out in the field. Have you done all those loads of laundry, washed them, dried them, folded them, and even delivered them straight to your children's room, only to ask, put these away, and received the look of, how dare you ask me to put those clothes away? That's totally unfair. It's a bit exaggerated, I hope, <laughs> and I realize. But sometimes it might not be that far off base as all of us learn our roles and responsibilities within a household that we have. But even as adults, I think the same sort of things happen sometimes. Perhaps between spouses or roommates, perhaps one or the other takes the time to do the dishes washes them, dries them, puts them in the dishwasher, whatever that means, only to ask the other in the household, hey, I have some stuff I got to finish up. Could you put these away for me? To get a response of, fine. And begrudgingly, the job eventually gets done. Now, perhaps all this sounds just ridiculous. And I'm sure for each and every one of you, you're always eager and willing to jump in at a moment's notice. But we all falter a bit, don't we? Especially when what we feel is being asked of us is just too much of a burden. Even though whatever it is we're being asked to do probably really isn't that much to begin with, we're just making a big deal about it. Well, as we heard Connie read our lesson from Micah this morning, it's really that same childish, selfish, self-centered, surface-level complaining that's coming from those Israelites. Picking up at the beginning of chapter 6, as this we find ourselves in the midst of a courtroom scene, we've got the Israelites on the witness stand. And we've got the Lord, who's accusing the Israelites of neglecting their end of the covenant, their end of the deal, which was entirely true. Because though the Israelites had been called to be the light to the nations, offering injustice and peace to all peoples, well, they exactly hadn't been doing that. So to start it all off, the Lord lets in on them and says, tell me, guys, come on, how have I wearied you so much? Just tell me. Oh, that's right, actually, I remember. I brought you out of Egypt, and I gave you freedom. Oh, of course, and then I gave you leader after leader after leader, even after Moses, so you guys could get set up as your own. Oh, unless I forget I interceded, even when you had horrible kings ruling you, and to bring it all home, I protected you after crossing the Jordan when you were traveling from Shittim to Gilgal. That's right. 
I did all that. I've shown you faithfulness, even though you as my people haven't been faithful. I've given you good news and hope and freedom. I've washed the clothes, dried them, folded them, and delivered them straight to your room. And now what I'm asking you is unfair. Being the people that I created you to be is somehow unfair. If it sounds ridiculous, it's because it is. But it was with that condemnation put before the people. But now, finally, the prophet gets to speak on behalf of these Israelites. And admitting that they haven't exactly lived as God intended. The prophet begins to spout off all these things that God might see as satisfactory. A whole burnt offering. Some calves, some nice young livestock. If that's not enough, how about a thousand rams? Ten thousand rivers of oil poured out for you, God. Is that enough? A firstborn son? But the Lord simply responds, come on, guys. You know actually what I want. Do justice. Love kindness. Walk humbly with your God. Intentionally walk with the Lord in daily life by living as a participant in my mission. That's it. I don't need all those other things. I just need you. I want you to walk with me. I want you to trust my faithfulness. I want you to take my mission where I've left it and bring my hope and my justice and my kingdom to all people. That's it. Remember what I've done and take up my mission to live as God's people. From time to time, from then on, it'd be an understatement to say that at times Israelites did exactly this. And at times they waffled on their commitment. But bringing this to us, if we were to assess ourselves of how now we do with these two things, remembering what our Lord has done and remembering our call to live in God's mission, I wonder how we'd respond ourselves. Given the fact that we're here on a Sunday morning worshiping our Lord It seems like we're heading in the right direction to chuck off the first box that we're remembering what our Lord has done. Perhaps. But in the midst of our daily lives, do we always remember what the Lord has done for us and for the world? Or sometimes in light of everything else going on for ourselves, for the church, for the world, sometimes does it become a little difficult to see or remember God's savings acts for us. To be sure, it might not be as easy to spot what God maybe has done for us like it was the Israelites. We likely haven't been led out of slavery, and it's likely we haven't been led from one land into a promised land. But still, that doesn't mean that God hasn't been at work. God has continued to be faithful in keeping God's promises even when we ourselves have faltered and even when we ourselves haven't kept up our relationship with God. But even when we have lacked our fidelity, God has been steadfast and has never wavered in his promises. That's why God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, so that we would be set free. And like the Israelites, we would be given new hope and we would be given a promise of new life. And that work has been done, friends. God has already washed the clothes, dried them, folded them, and given them straight to us so that we and all the world would be brought together in his kingdom where there is no oppression, there is no injustice, but all are brought together at God's mercy seat. But now that basket of folded laundry is being given straight 
to us. So we're going to throw a temper tantrum, claim that the work of justice and love is just too much for us to carry, something we shouldn't have to be concerned about in our lives, especially with work, maybe even as a small congregation. Remember, Moraine, our call to walk and live as God's people. Are we going to be willing to pick up that mission that God started? The answer of what we should do probably sounds obvious. Of course, we'll pick up this mission that God started. That's the right and the good answer, isn't it? It is. But at the end of the day, what our Lord requires and desires is going to take us even beyond what we do. Because first and foremost, what our Lord desires is you. For you to walk with him in all things. And to trust in his faithfulness in all things. And from that intentional walk with our Lord, I promise you, we will be transformed to pursue those acts of justice and love and to pursue that call in God's kingdom. So this morning, in our worship, as we too are reminded of the things God has done for us as God's people, I invite you to remember and recall what it is that God has done for you individually. And as you recall and remember what God has done for you, I invite you to consider your call to walk and to live as God's people. To follow this invitation won't be a one-time deal. You're going to be asked to put the laundry away more than once. But as people who are made new by these promises, we are sent forth out into a world that is longing for hope. And it's only this good news of our God that justice and truth can truly go to all the ends of the earth. So are you willing to pick up that basket with me as we head out of here today?
called to live in God's kingdom of justice, mercy, and love. I invite us into a time of prayer, praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, you have faithfully kept your promises to us, even when we have turned from you. Open our eyes to see signs of your work among us and in us, and grant us boldness to take up your call to offer ourselves fully to you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, you have set us free and called us to live in service to one another. Embolden your church that we might seek justice for the oppressed, share generously your loving kindness, and live humbly together. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, you raise up the lowly and comfort those in despair. Surround those who suffer with your blessing and with your healing. This morning, we especially remember Thelma, Margaret, Harper, Debbie, Philip, Jay, Shane, Aaron, Stacy, Jackson, Perry, Evelyn, Jim, Rick, Mark, and those we name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, you promise to fill those who hunger and thirst with good things. Provide for those in our community who lack basic needs and bless community partners who do service in your name. This morning, we especially remember the work of MCSA and ask your blessing on the work done by our family faith team as clothes are distributed to those in our community. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, confident that you continue to lead us according to your one true light, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Receive us and all that we are according to your mercy. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share God's peace with those around you. Please rise. And we pray. Merciful God, receive these gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, 
and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with life and light. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and the gift of your Son, Proclaim the good news and word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life so that all the world might see your light. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit among us, and bless this meal. Awaken your people and fill us with your light. Join our prayers with your servants of every time and place, and unite them with the petitions of our victorious Lord of all, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh for us. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to remember what our Lord has done for you. Come to receive your Lord and your King.
Please rise. We pray. A morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us yet again with your heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, and every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. May the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And may the blessing of our almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We sing together, Lord of justice, Lord of light. the congregation to be seated for a few announcements. We will be moving shortly into our annual meeting as a congregation. All are invited to stay and join us for that, but first a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. We've been collecting funds for Joel Christensen, who uh, takes care of our lawn outside, um, to no charge to us as a congregation throughout the year. So if we would like to offer him a gift of appreciation, and so if you'd like to contribute towards that, there's a basket in the narthex. I invite you to drop something in there. We'll be collecting this week and next week. Okay, very good. Cool. Need to check with my office manager on that one. I have been um, following a couple different pages for our community organizations on different social media sites, and I recently came across a request from MCSA that right now they are in need of pants for men, especially sizes 32 to 36, but they'll take anything from 32, well, and up, really. Um, They're looking for jeans, they're looking for sweatpants, they're looking for business wear, things you wear to the office. So if you're interested, we're not going to do a formal collection here, but I wanted to make you all aware of it. That way, if you'd like to offer something and offer um, your gifts, just take those directly to MCSA downtown. We will have an address for that in our weekly e-news as well this week. Looking ahead, we have a couple different dates coming up, and I think we have a slide of those as well, just so you can see them all at quick at a glance, um, because there's a lot coming up in February here in our community life together. We're going to be having a game night. In next weekend, next Saturday, bring a little appetizer, a board game. I just learned how to play pickup sticks last night. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it might make it next week. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of frustrating. Not going to lie. All right. We also have women's group coming up on the Saturday, the 11th. Uh, we'll be meeting at 830. Then, beloved tradition, we have Chocolate Fest. Who doesn't want to be here for Chocolate Fest? Get your chocolate delicacies ready, and we will have a feast before Lent begins. 
Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, February 22nd, with worship here at Shepherd at 7. Which leads me into my last announcement for us as a congregation is to give a little bit of a precursor of what that Lenten season is going to be like. Um, I'm going to have, there we go, there's the image right there. Our theme for this Lent is seeking. And in the words of our authors of the materials we're using, they write, this Lent offers us many stories of Jesus encountering people who are seeking. Nicodemus comes to him in the veil of night. Jesus approaches the Samaritan woman at the well, and he heals a man born without sight. In each of these stories, people are seeking new beginnings, a different life, a deeper faith. What unfolds is an exchange filled with questions and exploration. Often an unveiling occurs. Assumptions are disruptive. A new perspective is revealed. Mystery grows. So this season, we're going to embrace those questions together and embrace this journey of seeking. Whether it's a seeking of our faith, a seeking within our own lives, a seeking of purpose, we're going to seek together as a congregation. And to lean into that on Wednesday nights, we're going to structure our gatherings with some time together, some time in small groups, some scripture, some prayer, some music. It's all going to happen. Perhaps not in the same fashion that we might expect on Sunday mornings, but it's all going to happen in order to encourage us to seek together. Seek Christ and seek our relationship with one another. So as to have some leaders for what we're going to be doing, and also to have some snacks, because who doesn't like a couple snacks when we're gathering together in small groups? We're asking for a little bit of some input from you all, if you think you'll be joining us on Wednesday nights during Lent or not. There's a sign-up in the narthex uh, if you'd like to sign your name that way. There's also going to be a sign-up through our weekly emails that will come out this coming week as well. More information about the season and what this will look like and different aspects that you can be involved will be offered. But I wanted to give just a little bit of a preview to begin thinking as we look forward to this coming season and intentionally prepare ourselves for the season of Lent as well. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, th and thanks for noting that, um, Judy. I think uh, the times I saw in the post that I saw online was between 5.30 a.m. and 10 p.m. So whatever time you work, you probably can get down there. Um, or let me know. I'm willing to, more to load up my car and take stuff down, too. So if you just can't get downtown, let me know. Yes. Yes. Plastic grocery bags. So if you're like me and you have about 10,000 bags downstairs, those are going to go there soon. Also, egg cartons. They collect those too. So they take egg cartons. Any other announcements? Yeah. I'm going to go be seeing the Lion King Jr., especially because our beloved Elise is a part of it, along with some other youth from our Family Faith Nights are also a part of this uh, show, so it's going to be a great time. So, yes, Lion King is coming up. Thank you. Any other announcements? Then I'm going to invite Deline to come on forward to start our annual meeting, and as she's coming forward, uh, we do have annual reports and